Every once in a while, history has a way of vomiting up a story so crazy that even your bored high schooler sitting in history class might even be tempted to think history might not be so bad. If that doesn't make you wonder about the story I'm about to tell you, then nothing will. Once upon a time, there was a man by the name of Wilhelm Kyle, who was called a few other names, such as Doctor, Father, and even King Kyle by his followers. He and his wife arrived in America at a time when the idea of utopian societies were all the rage among some. He eventually denounced all organized religion and became the leader of a communal group of followers in Bethel, Missouri, whose belief it was to follow the Golden Rule. After living among themselves there for 10 years, he felt like organized settlements were expanding too close to their community, and he had scouts find a place out west in Oregon Territory that they could relocate to. And this is where the story really gets sideways. Dr. Kyle's oldest son, Willie, was extremely excited about heading west and anxiously begged his father to be the lead wagon on the journey. But he got sick with malaria and died four days before the group departed. But Dr. Kyle, owing to Willie's desire to go west, saw to it that he did just that. But this is 1855, and exactly how does one take a body on a six-month-long journey? Well, it seems that the Bethelites, as Dr. Kyle's followers were called, made their own whiskey called, what else, Golden Rule Whiskey. So the colony tinsmith fashioned a metal coffin of sorts for Willie, dropped it into a barrel, and filled it with a lot of Golden Rule 100 proof whiskey and sealed the lid on it. They placed the barrel on the lead wagon, which had just been fashioned into a hearse of sorts, and set out for the west, Willie in the lead, just as he had wished, albeit literally sloshed. Wilhelm Kyle's accounts of their journey out west chronicled many encounters they had along the way of other travelers and Indians. According to accounts, as the wagon train got just west of Fort Laramie, a band of Indians in war dress approached the wagon train, who were sure they were in for trouble. A young painted warrior approached the wagon carrying Willie and pointed to the barrel. Kyle pried off the lid and allowed the young man to look inside. At their leader's signal, each and every member of the war party filed by to peer inside the coffin, and then they quietly rode away. One has to wonder what was going through their heads as they took that situation in. Not long after this encounter, Willie, Dr. Kyle, and the Bethelites reached their destination the scouts had found them near Willapa, Washington, and poor Willie was finally laid to rest where he had always hoped to be. It wasn't long until the Bethelites became disillusioned by their new paradise and picked up and moved south. They went to Willamette Valley, Oregon, where they founded the town of Aurora, and despite their isolationist nature, became respected tradesmen and business developers with communities around them. But poor Whiskey Willie was left by himself in the lonely, windswept, foreboding valley in Washington, with just a simple marker to acknowledge his existence until the state erected a heritage marker in his memory. To celebrate his legendary trip west in liquor, a bar across the highway from Willie's resting place called Tombstone Willie's offered travelers and locals alike a place to have a drink in honor of their neighbor, and how he came to be the only person to travel the entire length of the Oregon Trail while dead. And who said history is boring? Thanks for watching this short story. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back for more.